the Product Red iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. In my opinion, incredibly sexy, but leaving a lot to be desired in the front with that white display. It looks cheap, it looks like an iPod Touch, not something that should match, so I thought I'd put together a little project for you guys, what it would look like if you were to combine it with a jet black or a matte black iPhone, and that means not only display, also I'm going to attempt to retrofit the buttons, even the back Apple logo. I'm gonna actually show you guys a cool new red one uh, that might actually look cool, I don't know about that. In any case, I'll put a black one on there. Basically, make a hybrid between the product red iPhone 7 Plus and the matte black iPhone 7 Plus. This is a pretty ambitious project, and I know, I know not a lot of you guys are gonna be doing this. Almost nobody is going to want to attempt this because you basically need two iPhones, a donor, and the receiver, and all of these parts are gonna put on this one, and it won't look that great with a white display, but essentially you'll get a very, very sexy product, red one. So let's go ahead and attempt this and see how it looks. And also the jack on the bottom. As you can see, for me, it really throws it off when it's a silver jack on a red phone. I think with black, it'll look much better. All right, so don't worry. I'm not going to be using the ones I'm giving away. I am using a brand new one that I just bought without Apple Care because I'm obviously voiding the warranty here. So let's get into it. Six and a half hours later. And here it is, guys. Time to enjoy the fruits of my labor. So black screen product red back but way better than that so we've got a black apple logo oem all of the black buttons the mute switch from a matte black iphone the contrast between these is really really amazing so i did uh, put a sim card tray that's black too you don't have to I mean, I just think it's a nice little touch. Also, the thing that bothered me the most about Product Red was that the charging port was this silver look. So taking a look at the real and my version, as you can see, I think it looks much, much better. The silver just is off-putting. So here we've got front and back. Look at that. So cool. So, you know, directly, it's hard to tell that this thing is black and this one isn't, but that is the case on the side and the back. So look at that, guys. Now, I just wanted to show you guys the final result first, as doing this is not easy. Uh, it does take a very long time. And the reason you're seeing this Touch ID here is because I did not actually replace the logic board with one that belongs to this Touch ID sensor. So you definitely can do that for an OEM swap like this. You won't have this problem. This is just my issue. But I'd say it definitely looks much, much better than what Apple came out with. So. Um, you know, it's just my opinion, but this is definitely something I would use. The amount of work it takes to get there though, uh, I don't know. But for the sake of being unique, there it is guys. Product Red and Product Red Plus Black. Super, super cool. I also wanted to show you guys what I did with the other side. So I've got Product Red buttons that are replaced into the original matte one that it came from. And Product Red buttons over here. We've got the silver port and the white display on the front, which looks pretty bad on a white or black iPhone. But if it was red all around and red Apple logo in this, it would look kind of cool. So this is the touch activated Apple logo multi RGB color one. It looks kind of weird to be honest, but that's just the byproduct of doing the original mod here. So guys just wanted to say there it is and that is how you do it. A ridiculous amount of work, but a very, very sexy and sleek result. So. That black Apple logo, which is, you know, it's almost even hard to notice that it's there. The buttons, I think, is what really gives us a nice touch. So thanks for watching, guys. That's what a product red iPhone would look like with black elements to it. So what you need is a donor iPhone where you're going to be taking the screen from. Or if you just want to replace the screen, just a black iPhone screen. Take note that the Touch ID won't work unless you put the white one from your other phone on. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Of course, the product red iPhone a battery sticker that you absolutely need to replace. I would recommend an OEM one, which I have a lifetime supply of. Stop by my house if you want one. Not really. <laughs> uh, one of these, the waterproof seal or water resistance seal. So you can go ahead and reinstall them on top and keep that functionality. Now, I will be attempting to do the volume buttons, which are also water resistant, so be very careful, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. I might not even be able to do them. They're in there so tightly. And of course, your tool set, you're gonna need the tri screwdriver uh, for the new screws inside of here, and uh, let's get into it. And of course, you wanna turn the phone off before you begin. My mistake in all of my videos here. And start with the pentalobe screws on the bottom here. I will be opening up the donor just to take the display off first and all the volume buttons. So essentially stripping it down. Of course, uh, if you want to save your logic board and transfer it over here, you can do that. With your pry tool, go ahead and pry up an edge of the display and we wanna cut away 
the entire sticky adhesive that is the water resistance layer and you want to do it very carefully so you don't accidentally trim the cables over here the flex cables so this does require quite a little bit of effort eventually you'll loosen it enough to where you can fit your little pry tool in there and just go very very gently around the edges cutting the adhesive away and remember there are tabs up here so you don't want to lift the screen up too high that's how i cracked mine last time but it was damaged already so just go around the entire edge of the display cut away that adhesive and right here is where you really want to be gentle not to force your tool in the display and cut those ribbon cables pull the display slightly down so the little clips unhinge it's these right here and fold it out to the right so you want to be very gentle with this not to tear any of these cables here and with apple's tripoint screw you want to go ahead and unscrew this plate here and this one here take note of all the positions of all these screws because some of them can vary in length so this is with the tripoint screwdriver not your standard little phillips so out comes this plate and gently unclip the very very edge of this connector out comes this plate and do the very same thing to this connector so with plastic spudge tool do remove that and there's one right underneath it so pop that one out as well so if there's any adhesive left gently disconnect it so at this point if you just wanted to replace the displays you can do that but for the people that really want to go above and beyond and get the black uh, touch id and have it working you guys are going to want to remove the logic board and replace it and if you want to get the black volume buttons and the apple logo itself uh, you can continue and it's definitely a lot more work but if you just wanted to get the display over you can just replace that and just redo those steps to get the display on this one next up let's get rid of that taptic engine held on by three phillips screws just to make some room to get the battery tabs out which there are three of three times the trouble here pop this plastic cover away and it reveals the actual connector for the taptic engine and as usual with these battery tabs they can be a pain but removing the taptic engine helps you remove them so Again, the reason I'm removing the batteries to get to the Apple logo and the volume buttons. So grab it with the plastic and just gently pull out and keep pulling at somewhat like this angle here. If you're lucky, it comes out pretty easy. There we go. So just two more to repeat. Unplug these little antennas here and go ahead and unscrew all of these bolts here as you see and set them aside in the exact order that they're visible. Now go ahead and remove the speaker and don't forget about those two little screws on the very bottom. And here it is, the red one. So I'm literally opening it without even turning it on. I'm just going to disassemble it into little pieces. That's a little sad here. I hope I really, really hope I don't do anything to mess this up. Again, very same process opens to the right and the casing inside here actually looks quite good so exactly what i show you we're going to do on the red one you know, take these panels off take the display off pull all of that stuff out because we will be swapping this bottom portion to remove the logic board start with this little piece right here remove these four screws and there is a little screw in the top corner there so just so you're aware go ahead and remove this little plastic piece here and now this little connector here so this plate unscrew it and unplug it from the volume buttons and remove the phillips right here and all of these screws and go ahead and peel this little cable off so we can actually leave the camera alone you don't have to unscrew that screw right here so now we can just directly take off all of the flat heads everywhere on the logic board and get that out of the way to get to the buttons and i didn't remove the ribbon cables so do that and two little ones up here so be very gentle with these out comes the logic board so i didn't have to remove the camera to do that but man, that is not easy. Now we got to unscrew all those little things, which I already have, and just peel this ribbon cable all the way down and replace it on the new one. So be very gentle not to tear it here. It would help heating it up immensely. And don't forget about the whole reason we are even in here. So pry out the lightning black connector so that we are immediately going to reapply into the red one. And when doing the bottom speaker, make sure to take the whole speaker with you as the whole housing will come out. So make sure to take the whole thing with you and transfer it. All right, now here's a tough one, the volume button. So you basically have to pry this one over and out and you take that out. Now this part is a little tricky. So to get the volume or power buttons out, I couldn't find a guide on this online, so I had to find this out, but press the button, so force it in, and the right side of the clip you wanna push up, and then 
poke into the little hole and pull it out. So one side of it goes up, the other out. And you do actually have to replace the entire ribbon cable for the volume and power buttons as the color for the mute switch is what you want to switch as well. And same thing in reverse, insert the black version of the button, plug the little pin in onto one side, make sure it goes all the way in and then fold it down onto the other pin here and that's it. And now we need to put this little clicky part in. Okay, and the hardest part has been done. So I've reinstalled this ribbon cable. Take a look at that. I can already tell that this is going to be straight up fire. Man, this looks good. The contrast red on black. But next is the Apple logo as soon as I reinstall the logic board. And I'm using a 1.0 uh, flat head to go ahead and get in there and pry it out. Once you get the little edge in, just go around it very gently here. Very, very simple. So it is held on with adhesive. I would recommend this waterproof tape right here to replace that water resistance when we reinstall it. So to show you guys this, I do have to eliminate all lights, but here's the red, kind of cool actually, although uh, it doesn't stay, it cycles through other colors. Here's a blue, very hard to see the tint through the camera, but essentially we'd have a red, white, and blue iPhone if I had the white display on it. As you can see, it does have that blue aura to it. This is like a yellowish orange, but the red does look good. So I decided I'm not going to be keeping this just because I hate that it cycles through the colors. The only colors that you can get it to sit on are white. So although it is cool, there are some neat functions with it. It just cycles through colors. It can strobe through them. Here's red, blue. As you can see, you get some really crazy ones. Just like this. This is like a Mario Kart when you get one of the golden stars hard to see but it does cycle through all of that so i won't be keeping this although it is pretty cool so on go the battery stickers here and uh, into the casing they go make sure it aligns pretty well with everything so essentially i am done i just put the display on and everything seems to work so much pain to make this work a lot of time but man, the result is absolutely stunning. In my opinion, this is the way Apple should have released this phone. The other way looks good, but this is just the cherry on top. So compared to the other one, I'd say it definitely is an improvement in my opinion. Now for most people, they're not gonna be doing this, uh, but for the 1% of that will or 0.1%, I wanted to make this guide to show you what you'd have to go through. Obviously I glossed over a lot of the bigger details, so I would highly recommend an iFixit teardown guide so you know exactly where everything goes, but basically I just wanted to give you the most important points. There it is, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. Something very different, something cool, how it would look like. Either way, enjoy your product red iPhone. It really is an awesome one. Made even better with a black display. Peace.